Nothing more fun than waking up to a trade request that gets denied faster than you can open your second eyelid. I woke up to a trade request this morning, and I thought it was very lopsided. For the players that were involved, there was no way I could accept it. And it got me thinking about trading. And we're getting closer to the season. OTAs, mini camps are here. Redrafts are going to start scheduling. And dynasties have already drafted, will be drafting. Player cuts need to be made, so trading is in full force. So I thought I'd jump on here and do a little bit of trade advice based on how I view trades. And I think it's a fair way to view it and an adequate way to view it so that you make sure that everybody involved gets what they need and it helps your team the best. Now, obviously, redraft is one thing. You're going to make a uh, player for player trade and redraft. That's going to happen all the time. I need a wide receiver. You need a running back. You're going to make that trade one for one all day long. One for one trades are very hard to come by and I don't recommend them in Dynasty. So there's a lot of uh, trade advice on YouTube. Check it out. But I want to hit you with some of my thoughts on a couple little checklist items I go through anytime I get sent a trade or I feel like I need to make a trade. First of all, know where you're trading. Dynasty, redraft, it all, ma it all matters. Dynasty, the player values change with age, usage, and exposure, I guess you could say, more than redraft. A guy like DeAndre Hopkins, Mike Evans, Derrick Henry, all your aging guys that might have one more season, this might be their last season, all those guys still hold top-tier value in a redraft. They don't necessarily hold them in Dynasty. Now, that brings me to point number one is know your team. When you're making a trade, are you in win now or are you in a rebuild? Because that's going to matter. Just like DeAndre Hopkins and these older guys matter for redraft. If you're in a <clears throat> if you're in a win now, those guys still hold value. However, you're doing that knowing that you're not going to have much value over the next couple of years and you're in a dynasty league. Now, if you're in a win now and you can get those guys and you can take the pot, and usually that pot will cover your buy-in for the next two years. Okay. Now you're in a rebuild, and this is where it really matters. Those guys don't hold the same value as a young player, as an up-and-coming player, as some rookies. A guy like Bijan, obviously he's young, is going to hold the same value as like a Saquon Barkley, but you got a few more years in him. So you got to look at what your team values are. Saquon probably got two more years. Bijan's probably got four more years. So you're going to have to take that into consideration and know what type of team you have. Rebuild or win now. Uh, you can... You can look at guys that are backups. You can look at these rookies like a Tyron Tracy who, or a guy that is second or third in line, depending on your depth and depending on your team needs. You can put them with the same amount of value as a guy like Austin Eckler. For example, keep trade cut puts Austin Eckler. This is in a single quarterback. Puts Austin Eckler, Keaton, Keaton Mitchell, and Roshan Johnson all right around the same trade value. That may or may not be true but it depends on your team needs. Austin Eckler does not hold the same value to me as a young guy, uh, someone who's coming up. Now, Keaton Mitchell, obviously, I think he's a drop candidate. Roshan Johnson's got people behind him, but in two years, Roshan Johnson could be a starting running back while Austin Eckler could be retired. You have to take everything into consideration. So know what type of team you're building. That goes hand in hand with the next thing. Know the type of team you're trading with. If I need a running back, I'm not going to go to a team that is low on running backs and try and get a running back from them. If they don't have a third guy that they're sitting there toggling in and out every week, it's not worth going after them. Same thing. If that guy has four wide receivers that could start any given week, I'm not going to try and offer him a wide receiver for a running back. He's not going to accept it. It's going to be a waste of time. So you need to know the team that you're trading with. You need to know what they need as much as you need to know what you need. And you should also know if they're in a win now or if they're in a rebuild. It's going to matter to them as well because maybe a draft pick and a mid-tier player is important to them more than a top-tier start them, set them, and forget them type of guy. So know your team and know your enemy. The next thing is... Don't be afraid to lose a trade. Some of the best trades you're ever going to make, some of the best trades I've ever made are giving up big pieces for lesser pieces that work out for me in the long run. In Dynasty, you can take an L today to win tomorrow. And that's the hardest thing that I think most people have when it comes to trading in Dynasty football is they're afraid to give up a major piece, a sure thing guy. 
because they always worry about the what if, which that's going to come to you in a second, the assumptions, the what ifs and anything like that. But if your team needs that flex player, your team needs that tight end, your team needs something, or you know that you've got an injury prone guy that you want to just have his handcuff. If your team needs that, that value increases to the point where you actually taking an L on paper is a fair trade because of team needs. I run into that more so than I think anything else when it comes to trading is so many people are afraid to lose a trade when they give up a guy and he goes crazy or the guy that they picked up has a really bad year or gets hurt. And that brings me to kind of number five or just my little bonus stuff here is you got to eliminate assumption when it comes to trades. You are trading for the value or the points that a player can score. You have to be very, very careful to not miss out on an opportunity because you're assuming that that person is going to get hurt. Injuries are the biggest thing. A guy like Christian McCaffrey is the biggest example of that. People love Christian McCaffrey. If he's in your lineup, you probably made playoffs. And if you have other pieces, you probably made the championship, if not won it. If you trade it for that guy, you trade it for him knowing that he's getting you 20 fantasy points a week when he's in the lineup. Yes, he's gotten hurt in the past, but this past season he didn't get hurt and he won you a league. So someone came to you and offered you Christian McCaffrey because you need a running back. And if he was in your lineup and you look at all your other pieces and you look at it and say, this is a championship roster, then make the trade. You can't assume that he's going to get hurt because if he if he comes to you, he, she, whoever comes to you and offers you that trade and you pass on it, they're going to go to the next person who might take that trade. And now you're sitting there just toggling do, or, do I or don't I make playoffs. Then you watch Christian McCaffrey go, go off and win a league for somebody. Assumptions work both ways. You can't assume they're going to get injured because if they don't, then you're going to be mad that you assume. So make a trade based on the value of the player and don't worry about if they're going to get hurt. Obviously, it's a concern. Anybody could get hurt at any given time, whether you trade a form or they've been on your roster for five years. Second part of that is when you're trading draft picks, the first round is a real sticky, sticky subject. So if you're trading and you're going to include a first round pick or you're going to try and get a first round pick, you have to look at all first round picks as equal. Every first round pick should be a mid late first round pick. You want to assume if you're in a 10 man league, you're getting pick seven, eight, nine, maybe 10. If you make the trade with that assumption, you're okay. The problem is you can't make a trade saying I'm giving you player A for your early first round pick next year because it's fantasy football. We all know as well as anybody, we can read the stats, watch YouTube videos, do our research, draft strategically. It's still just a shit show and it's a whole lot of luck. Controlled luck, controlled chaos, whatever you want to call it. But there's no guarantee that you're getting a first round pick for that player. So if you make that trade and all of a sudden the team that you traded goes nuts, they're in a rebuild, but everybody went off and now you got pick nine, you're going to be mad about that trade. So you can't enter any a trade. You can't enter any trade assuming that A, B, and C are going to happen. You have to make the trade with what you know and what you can control. You're getting a late first. If it happens to be an early first, great. It's the same thing you're giving up. When you're going to give up a first round pick, you can't say, well, you're getting an early round first. Because if you do that to someone, your team goes crazy. Good luck trading with them in the future. Which leads me to another thing. Don't take advantage of people. Everyone wants to try and win every trade. Don't be afraid to lose some. If you completely win a trade, take advantage of someone who might not really know as much as you or a new person, it can do two things. It can block you from getting trades from anybody in the league, and it can kill a dynasty league. And to a lot of us who enter into this and spend the time doing it, we care too much to have someone come in and ruin a league because they're just being an a-hole. If you really take advantage of someone one time, you might get away with it. If you're known for being a guy who never makes fair trades, at some point, your league mates are going to stop trading with you completely, and they're going to go to the next guy. You're going to get that stigma of, ah, uh, he never makes fair trades. Oh, I don't want to make his team better. Oh, screw him. That's, that's problem number one. Problem number two is people might get mad. People might get frustrated. They put a lot of time. They put a lot of money into this. Don't gamble. And 
effort, whatever. And if they feel like the league is lopsided or unfair, they're going to back out. It's going to blow up a dynasty league. You're going to have to reboot your dynasty league. Every minute you spend on that could be thrown out the window because you've got some people that just don't know how to treat others kindly and trade fairly. All that knowing, trading is one of the funnest things in dynasty football, in fantasy football in general. In redraft, I try and make trades as much as I can. It's just not as likely because dynasty has a lot more reality to it and future to it and a lot more options. Like I said, win now, redraft, age, depth, carries, whatever you want to say. It's a lot of fun. Watch my video. Watch all the other videos on YouTube. If you don't trade, start making trades. Make a little ones. Do whatever you got to do. But once you get comfortable with it, it makes your fantasy football life a lot more fun. And it makes the leagues a lot more fun when you got people making trades. I'm trying to get rid of Patrick Mahomes in my league, and I'm damn near giving him away. And people were just looking at it like, oh, there's no way he wants to make that offer. I just like making trades. And I want to see if I can rebuild, take a lesser quarterback, and bring that team up and not rely on one of your top quarterbacks. To me, that's a league where I want to experiment and have fun. It's fantasy football. This is Booze and Ballin'. We got our season two up and coming, stepping up our game a little bit. Stay tuned. Check us out. Uh, any questions, anything you want me to do? We're going to have some new drinks. We're going to have some new advice. We're going to do some dumb stuff. We're going to give you some good advice, and we're going to probably fail miserably a few times, but we hope you subscribe, like, comment, whatever. Cocktail's empty. Puka Nuka. I might have another drop. See you guys in the season.